Hey everyone, end all be all here, and uh, we are back with the uh, with the finals of uh, week one. Um, the first match we won. Second match, uh, let me give you guys a quick update. I did not record a video for this, but the second match was against uh, Mini SSD. Uh, not a very even match. Uh, I won pretty comfortably. My opponent kept almost everything on offense. Uh, their strongest team on defense was, I think, Grievous or something like that. Um, but they were still not able to clear uh, more than a couple of zones. So nothing much to uh, to talk about over there. Um, I kept uh, a reasonably tough defense. A uh, couple of GLs at the back, I think. Um, yeah, just one GL at the back, but, uh, but uniformly tough teams. So uh, that was a pretty uneventful match. I didn't record any commentary for that. I think going forward, I'll probably only be uh, recording commentary for... Uh, for interesting matches that uh, that you know there's uh, there's something that uh, something interesting that I can share or a really good opponent like in this particular case my current opponent Der Puveda from Death Star Maintenance Crew a really good opponent he's got uh, 928k lifetime banners um, and he's uh, <clears throat> I think really reached about 150 less than 150 rank in Kyber previously yep 145 and goes uh, reasonably light on defense. If you see over here, his defensive record 505. Um, mine is close to 1,000. So uh, I've seen his uh, record over the last season of 3v3. Always kept the same defense and never kept a single GL on defense. Always goes extremely offense heavy. Um, so, you know, and, and uh, you know, plays a really good efficiency game. Um, and he's got uh, four GLs, uh, just like me. Doesn't have the new one, Jedi Master Kenobi, but he's got um, all the others, and he's got an R7 cat as well. So it's going to be a good matchup. This guy's got good rec good uh, mods, uh, really good off offensive record. In fact, he's uh, in the last three seasons he's he's been undefeated. He hasn't lost a match, so he's got a, a pretty big streak going for for him. I think only one match, the last match that he lost, um, you know, a few dozen matches ago, uh, it was an auto deploy. That means he went ahead and. Uh, and set an auto deploy and uh, um, wasn't able to clear as a result. So apart from that, every single match he's won in the in his recent history. So he's been doing uh, pretty well uh, in terms of uh, GAC success. So let's uh, see if he can uh, go ahead and break his streak. The one thing I really noticed about uh, about my opponent is uh, he's got amazing ships, really really good ships. Um, I mean. Uh, <clears throat> top class. He always keeps both his uh, uh, get two fleets on defense, negotiator and malevolence. No exceptions there. And he uses uh, both the uh, rebel ships as well as first order ships um, to take out the enemy ship. So if he sees a negotiator, he uses his own uh, uh, rebel fleet or, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, um, Hux to take out uh, negotiators. And then he takes home one against uh, malevolence as well. And he's got a pretty high success rate with, uh, with these off meta counters to get two ships. So this is one of those rare cases where I've been outclassed and outmatched in ships category. So I need to be, uh, I need to up my game and maybe change my strategy a little bit when it comes to ships. So <clears throat> let's go in and see how I've uh, modified my, uh, my strategy, my offensive and defensive strategy to adapt to my my new opponent, Derp Vader, who's uh, you know definitely got it in him to uh, to beat me. So I'll have to do something to outwit him. So what I did this time is, given the fact that my opponent goes so heavy on offense, I haven't seen him keep a GL on defense in the last two 3v3 seasons. I decided to keep not one, not two, but three of my GLs on, uh, on defense. Uh, and the way I spread them out is one in each character zone. So there's one in the front zone, down south. I've kept uh, I've kept a, the reasonably tough squad that I usually keep. I kept CLS, Gas, uh, Rex with Cat this time. If you're the few of you who've seen um, my Zarath uh, uh, collab video, I talked about Cat with Rex and Fives. Really fast Cat. Um, this has been doing well for a few people. They've they've told us that uh, they've had some success with this. So I thought I'll I'll try it out. Uh, uh, on defense. And then the one GL I kept on defense in the front over here is GML. I'm hoping to draw out the Sith Eternal over here and potentially one or two other GLs as well. So GML with uh, a couple of weak Jedis, the, the goal is uh, basically just to bait out the, uh, the, 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 the Sith Eternal Emperor um, or a mirror match. And then at the, uh, at the back, I have my my own Ray hanging out over here with the Armorer and Holdo. Now this comp, 
sometimes gives problems to Sith Eternals uh, and SLKRs as well. In the last season, one of uh, my opponents lost with his SLKR against this particular uh, Ray with Armorer and Holdo. <clears throat> so I'm a little hopeful about that one. And even the rest of the squads that you see out here are, are pretty tough. There's a Shakti in there, 361 speed Shakti with, a <clears throat> with Tech and Sarge. Um, and I've kept my... Uh, my own uh, bad batch in there with a 361 speed echo uh, with the wrecker in there as well and then i've kept jedi knight revan i've never kept jedi knight revan on defense um, but i decided to keep it here this time because this is also a reasonably tough team to take out um, you need uh, you need something premium to take this particular squad out it's got tons of flexibility on offense but i decided to use it on defense this time and if you notice i didn't put my darth revan squad i typically keep my darth revan squad in the front um, the Basti Malak Darth Revan version, but my opponent is uh, pretty adept at uh, using Thrawn Vader to counter Darth Revan. So I thought it's going to be a waste. I might as well use him on offense and against something really good. Maybe a Malak solo against a Padme or something like that. Uh, EP with Basti maybe, and then Darth Revan by himself. So I thought I might be able to make him stretch a little more on. Uh, on offense rather than you know just simply getting wasted on defense and then up top also i've kept a uniformly tough defense i've kept my finn bros uh general grievous hux uh newt with the uh, django and b1 which seems to be pretty popular and then my third gl out here slkr with daka and zombie so each of the three zones one one gl each so uh my opponent would be forced to uh to spread uh, or make you know tough decisions you'd be forced to make tough decisions on which area to go after first what GLs to spare, what GLs to use, what kind of off-meta counters to use. So that is the main purpose of spreading this into three different zones, is to stretch them thin. And the other thing is, you know, my opponent could change the strategy on me because uh, he usually goes defense, uh, um, very offense heavy and defense light. So if he does that, what he always does, then, you know, he'll be forced to drop banners everywhere and I'll be able to take out... Uh, um, his squads with uh, with decent efficiency. If, however, he changes the script on me and decides to go uh, offense uh, light and defense heavy, if he decides to put um, a few GLs on defense and tough teams, then uh, he is going to struggle on my defense and is not going to be able to clear, uh, which is why I, uh, you know, in case he decides to keep all uh, three or four of his GLs on defense, blocking the front zones, um, what I'll do is I'll keep one GL in each zone just so that you know, he's unable to clear a single zone of mine if he decides to go all in on uh, on defense. So that's why I kept one GL in each of the three zones, um, just to, you know, handle both of those eventualities. Now, let's, uh, let's go over and take a look at the ship zone, because I did a couple of different things over here. Given that my opponent so cheaply takes out uh, uh, the negotiator, I decided to keep my negotiator on offense and kept uh, the malevolence um, on uh, on on defense. And then uh, I kept the ex Executrix with uh, um, with uh, TIE Bomber, Emperor Shuttle, and uh, um, the Sith Bomber in there as well. Um, now, the reason for keeping Emperor Shuttle in the starting lineup and not Vader is if, you're, if you think your opponent is going to use the Home 1 counter to uh, Empire Fleet, um, or even the First Order counter, sometimes it gets slightly tricky if... Uh, the uh, Emperor Shuttle is present along with TIE Bomber because usually the strategy in these cases is to go directly after TIE Bomber first, take him down. But if uh, uh, Emperor Shuttle is there, then home one, th then the TIE Bomber recovers protection or get, gains bonus protection every time it's critically hit. And it becomes slightly more difficult and takes a little more time to take down the uh, the TIE Bomber before uh, Vader comes in and then you know Tarkin's ship uh, you know gives all those offensive buffs out and all that so that that's meant to make the home one counter slightly more tricky um so that's that is basically what i was trying to do over here but my opponent's pretty comfortable in ships i didn't anticipate him having much of a problem with uh, with this fleet um he'll, he'll find a way now on defense <clears throat> so my opponent at the top it's a relatively easy zone i don't see anything much to be concerned about at the top which is great to see um, but at the bottom, he's really changed things up. I mean, he typically tends to go with a particular kind of defense, but um, he's completely changed the script over here. He never keeps any GLs in defense, and I already see a Ray over here. Um, he's kept Gas and DR on defense, which, again, he's never kept in the last two seasons of uh, 3v3. And then he's kept his crew squad. So he's definitely, you know, he, he's also obviously scouted me, seen my banners, seen seen my, uh, you know, my play style. And he's seen that I usually don't keep GLs on defense as well. So he also probably thought the same way as me that 
I'm going to go uh, defense heavy and trap this guy. And then uh, I'm going to, you know, um, he's going to have a light defense and I'm going to go and, uh, and uh, you know, without a GL, I'll be, I'll be fine if I just have a few GLs of my own and uh, I'll be able to clear the uh, the board pretty efficiently. So that's his game plan to win in the uh, to you know, to just even me out on the character zone and then win in the ship zone. I think that's what he's planning to do. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get started with the uh, with the matches itself. Um, so <clears throat> I decided to go ahead and to start the match off. I decide to go with uh, against the Vader squad. Now I need to. Um, no, not the Vader, the Darth Revan squad. Yep, so in the Darth Revan battle, I decide to... Uh, now, his Darth Revan can't be Vadered. All, all his, the three of his characters are, are way faster than my, uh, than my, my Vader. Uh, Basti, Malak, and uh, Darth Revan. And, uh, you know, I couldn't take the chance of Vader being feared. Um, and uh, so what I decided to do was, I uh, decided to try the trooper counter. And this is something I saw in, uh, I think, Fatal's video. Um, I have before this GAC battle, I've modded up my Veers for tons of crit chance. He doesn't have as much as he should. He's only got about 65% special. Uh, well, the goal is about 85% special crit chance. And the, and the goal is once you uh, do the AOE with Veers, you're supposed to crit Malak and get feared so that the assist call is forced to happen on. Uh, um, on Dark Trooper, who's the relict one and who does all the damage. So let's see how this uh, this battle goes. The very first step, I uh, give the uh, Mark II Dark Trooper attack Basti, get rid of his, uh, get rid of her foresight, and then uh, take do the mass assist and take out Basti. And you see over here, Veers is feared, which is perfect situation. So now I can do an assist call and uh, do a couple of hits on uh, Malik. Malik is in yellow, so he drains once. And now I decide to just go for Malik and take him out. And uh, I was able to get that done. Dark Malik, Darth Revan goes. And unfortunately, my Veers is only G12, so he was taken out. But, uh, you know, R5, Dark Trooper, no problem at all for him. He was able to take out Dark Revan, no problem at all. So 49 banners, a little low on banners, but uh, I have a feeling that this is going to be a slugfest, given that he's changed the script and he's gone a little heavier on defense so i'm not that worried about banners at this stage now uh, the gas team um i i consider taking um uh my uh my han and uh, chewy with the bam in there uh, but two things one is i wasn't really sure whether i would be able to get rid of uh, uh, it is a high protection gas and i wasn't sure i would be able to make him sit down fast enough before he starts destroying my team and i've seen that counter fail a few times um, and I had, uh, you know, uh, I had my Darth Revan with me, so I thought might as well use uh, Darth Revan against Gas. Uh, it can get dicey, especially if uh, he decides to go after one of the characters. But, um, but I, uh, I felt, uh, you know, this might be this might be fine. Unfortunately, I got crit, which is why I couldn't do the fear ability first. Uh, but uh, my goal is to just make him sit down right now. And these guys are taking too many turns, which I don't like. But uh, finally, he's able to sit down. And um, now I need to take out fives. Uh, there's tenacity up, so there's no point in doing uh, the fear ability. So I do a basic um, and then do a shock on fives. And now I can do the fear. And then the basic from uh, Darth Revan, because it ignores defense, it was able to take out fives pretty easily. So that's one advantage of using Darth, Darth Revan versus uh, uh, gas. Um, fives is uh, relatively quick to take out. Now over here, again, um, he did the uh, basic, cleared his, uh, his fear, uh, cleared his uh, protection pretty fast, and then he was able to take him out because uh, you know he ignores defense on his basic. So this was a pretty good outcome, 51 banners, and gas was one shot, and I don't think I could have used my my Darth Revan in a better spot because it uh, allowed me to save my GL. Both my both the uh, enemy Darth Revan and gas were taken out in one shot without me using a GL, which was uh, which was a good sign because I just have one GL with me. I've kept three of my four GLs on defense. Um, I just have one GL with me, Jedi Master Kenobi, and. Uh, I need to make him stretch. So there's a ray in the front, and I don't trust any non-GL counter to ray. Uh, I could have 
bottle down the rape bit by bit, but I didn't uh, I didn't trust that enough. Um, if my opponent had a cheese back wall, then I would be losing out in that particular case. So I decided to take the gamble. I thought, let me use my um, my only GL against the Ray over here and then take the chance that my opponent does not have any GLs at the back because if they do have a GL on the back, then that means they would have kept two GLs on their defense and they have nothing to take out the three GLs that I have on my defense. So that's the gamble that I took. Um, I felt, you know, I might not be able to clear even if there's a GL at the back, but at least my, I know for sure that my opponent won't be able to clear me. So uh, let's go ahead and do this battle. It's a pretty straightforward battle. I decided to save my Kenobi for uh, the Padme team, and I decided to take Mace as the uh, as the the Jedi over, over here, the Jedi tank. And I've got my Mace modded really, really slow. The reason for that is, uh, you know, you need... Uh, damage immunity on mace as much as possible um, and uh, what i'm doing over here is i'm trying to attack ray directly whenever i get the chance um, and uh, i'm trying to give damage immunity to uh, uh, mace whenever i can so here there's a double tank situation so it's a little more tricky but i'm able to at least uh, target ray with the uh, kenobi um, so that's the one uh, uh, savior which was triggered and now I'm able to I just need to a little bit more uh, attack on uh, Ray to take her down and then it would be pretty simple the one thing going in my favor was that this is a non ultimate Ray if you notice um, and uh, so he was I think he's just unlocked Ray this is the latest uh, GL to be unlocked so that uh, that pre prevented her from going into the ultimate and stripping more banners from me because I'm sure if she had gone into ultimate uh, Mace wouldn't have survived for sure. Maybe Cam would have, uh, but Mace definitely would not have survived. So it would have been lesser banners for me. But um, but in any case, uh, you know, Kenobi versus Ray is a pretty straightforward battle. Um, especially if you have Cat in there to give all that extra uh, bonus uh, offense and uh, and health. Um, but anyway, so here uh, we were able to one shot the the one GL that we see in the front. Uh, and now for the Screw Squad, I use one of my favorite counters, Bam. Uh, IG and Quill. I think this is one of the best uses for these guys because the crew squad can tend to uh, extract banners. Even if you take a really heavy team like Padme, you end up getting 51 banners. But with the BAM team, you end up uh, pretty much uh, recovering most of the banners. Um, I tend to avoid using the BAM counter if there are two uh, tanks in this team, like First Order, uh, Stormtrooper, and Crew. But then in that case, I, I probably would not use this counter. But in case there is Kylo Ren over here, OG Kylo and uh, Red or even Hux in there, I've had this counter work fine in those cases. All right. So now I'm trying to, the top priority is to take down Sith Trooper as soon as you can. So that's what I'm doing over here. Little bit of uh, red health on Sith Trooper, but now with this, I'm able to take him out. And once the trooper is gone, there's absolutely no damage in this team at all. And you should be able to control them pretty easily. So Kylo will do tons of AoEs and all, but that's no big deal. Because uh, you can uh, you can heal yourself up. You can get, uh, um, you can get um, shocks in there. And then when you get a chance, you can you know, just get rid of Kylo just like that. And uh, uh, the Kylo Ren Unmask crew, you can stall a little bit on while you recover health and protection from the rest of your characters. So that's what I'm doing over here. Um, now everyone is at full health and full protection. Now I, I have plenty of shocks, healing immunity, and uh, other things to, to control Kylo while I, uh, I get rid of him. So another shock um, to keep him under control. Another heal, and with the final whistling birds, I'm able to take him out. So this is actually a really good use for for Bam on on offense. Um, I don't recommend keeping Bam on defense. So now let's take a look at what my opponent has on defense. So he did keep uh, another GL at the back, and this is a tricky one. I think from my history, he might have seen that I failed once on this particular uh, GL comp, which is uh, Jedi Knight Luke with uh, Jedi Master, Luke, and Watt. Um, this can get a little tricky. And, and Kylo, which typically works um, with uh, JML and Watt, uh, especially if Basti lead is in there, will not work in this one because Jedi Knight Luke is going to make quick work of Kylo. So he might have figured out that this is one team that I struggle on and I might uh, have some problems with. And he figured the only way to beat me would be to stop me from clearing. And then even if he's inefficient, 
um, in clearing, at least he'll be able to beat me. Um, because, you know, uh, a slugfest is really not my opponent's strength because he goes efficiency. His comfort zone is, is efficiency, high efficiency. So I sort of forced him into a, a slugfest match, which is where uh, I excel because I think my depth of roster is slightly more. I can afford to keep more heavier teams on defense and take, uh, you know, lighter teams to clear uh, for greater banners. So that's what I'm hope that's what I think my opponent was hoping over here that I'll get stuck and not clear and then he'll be able to clear me. Um but what he didn't anticipate was me keeping three GLs. So we'll see how that turns out. For now let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, the rest of the squads are not that problematic. We have a solution for everything else. The main problem is going to be the Jedi Knight Luke uh counter. But let's uh, let's figure out uh, some of these other teams. Um so JTR versus uh <clears throat> versus um, uh, CLS. This is a counter that has not failed me so far. I've got my modding on the JTR team right. And I always do a quick check on how my enemies, 3PO and Chewy, are modded uh, and CLS before I use this particular counter. Um, it's always advantageous if there's uh, less tenacity on 3PO and Chewy uh, and no crit avoidance on um, on um, uh, and no crit avoidance and uh, tenacity on this guy as well, um, which is what allows them to be controlled like this with with dazes and stuns and ability blocks. And the crit avoidance is to, is to allow the exposers to land because expose uh, lands on crit with JTR lead. And that is how um, um, I'll get to reduce that turn meter. But anyway, you can see over here, not much of an issue. Uh, they were able to be cleared for 53. Um, so I think I'll probably continue to use that counter until, unless I see a properly modded uh, CLS, in which case I'll probably switch to troopers or something like that against uh, the CLS squad. All right, now against the Finn squad, this is the social contract team. I, I love Kira with Han and Chewie. I think she gives me the most amount of control. A um, lot of people prefer Wedge for the turn meter generation um, or old Ben or any of the other leaders, but I personally prefer Kira just because she gains speed, she has the ability to call assist, she staggers um, and just uh, you know controls the battle so much better without allowing the enemy to take a single turn. Now look over here, I will pop her AoE which, is, which staggers the enemy and then Chewie gets called to assist and then he pops that stagger and reduces the turn meter back down to zero and I, without allowing them to sing, take a single turn, I get 54 banners. So that's my favorite version of that team. Now let's uh, let's take out a few of the other squads. Now the Spoggle squad, there's no tank in there, so uh, Geos are a pretty simple option. Anytime I see uh, I see Droidica or I see B1 in there, that's Geo food uh, because uh, you know you've got dispels, you've got mass assist. Um, so first option is for me to go after B1 very easily. Um, try to take out Poggle over here. Land a big hit on Poggle and uh, take him out so that he doesn't cleanse anyone. And then I'm going after B1 right now. He's got a few stacks. Um, so I decide to take out B1 before I attack uh, uh, Droidica. I should have healed over there probably, but I wasn't, uh, I, w I was thinking of, you know, wasting a little more time on, uh, on Droidica, but I had my big hit from Spy available. So I decided not to waste any more time and uh, decided to take out uh, Droidica right over there. One quick thing to note is uh, that uh, Droidica, has, even though he had damage immunity, Spy Special, the big hit, that does Dispel first and then does the damage. So you can still use it even if the enemy has got Dispellable damage immunity, um, not the indispellable kind like what Ray gives out um, or JKL or JMK. But uh, the Dispellable kind that Droidica has, it's perfectly fine to use the Spy big hit over there. Now this is a very popular counter. I knew that since I'd kept my my Jedi Knight Revan on defense, um, I needed to have uh, and my Bad Batch. Those two are, are the uh, my counters to Grievous, um, since I don't trust my my Mon Mothma because my um, Rogue One Rebels are pretty low geared. So I needed to have a solution for Grievous, and that's why I kept uh, Padme on on offense. Um, and Padme is a is a pretty uh, safe option to take against Grievous. Uh, in case you don't have Mon Mothma or um, Bad Batch or uh, Jedi Knight Revan. Um, sisters can get dicey and uh, I've stopped using Knight Sisters on uh, on Grievous these days. Um, I prefer a, a safer option, something like, uh, like Padme. Um, so there you see 51 banners without much effort within a minute. Um, 
GK is the best option, but even if you don't have GK, Barris, Ahsoka, tons of other uh, options work as well. All right, now I think I'm going to take uh, this against the Shark T squad, if I'm not mistaken. My Moff Gideon is really fast, 361 or so. so and uh, Shark T is not as fast, even though the arc is pretty fast, I think around 300 speed, and he'll get another 30 speed with Shark T. So I decided to take Gideon in there to reduce uh, everyone's turn meter, to reset everyone back. And then uh, go with uh, go with Vader to get rid of Shakti first. There we go. And then uh, get the get the others uh, in there. Um, now, unfortunately, because Shakti was there when I did my AOE, both these guys have got their retribution, which means I'm going to lose a few banners. I try to take back banners over here, but I probably should have waited till I fractured one of them because these guys will still do retribution. So he did the AOE, so a little bit of uh, health lost over there, or protection loss rather. So I'm trying to see if I can get back to full protection. Even though it's not an efficiency match, it's just good practice to do that. Um, but you can see over here, I'm not going to reach there, so I just decided to finish the battle. 51 banners there. Um, I think that was uh, one of the tougher teams left. There's always GL Newt over there with Django. Both of them are G12, so not much of an issue. So let's go ahead and tackle them. I decided to give uh, some amount of respect to uh, GL Newt, so I decided to go with my uh, Jedi Knight Luke squad. Uh, now this is another squad that I usually keep on defense, but uh, again I've seen my, my, my opponent take down the JKL squad pretty easily on defense, and given that I kept three GLs on defense, I needed to have at least half a GL uh, like JKL on offense, which is what I did over here. So Newt is down once. Um, damage immunity is still on Boba on uh, Django, um, so I need to I need to take down Nest in the meantime because uh, um, Newt is uh, under stealth. So now I take care of Newt, and now it's just Django. Heal up a bit. And uh, that takes care of it. All right. Uh, an R7 Newt uh, or R7 uh, Django would have probably killed someone over there with that one shot. But um, G12 is really nothing much to worry about. All right. So 53 banners over there. And, uh, you know, got to take my Stormtrooper Han Wampa. As long as I can spare what in this team, this makes such an easy uh, counter to so many teams. This is typically a tricky squad. I mean, under Maul. Uh, these guys are very fast and they're meant to strip banners with because all three of them have got tons of AOE. Um, but, uh, you know, um, and they've got tons of turn meter generation as well because um, Sith Marauder gains turn meter when enemy attacks out of turn and Sidious gains turn meter when uh, people die. I think 50% turn meter. So days is always good. The days that Wampa gives them is, is always good. Um, so I'm trying to do the protection up um, with Maul, with the Stormtrooper Han in there, there's absolutely no danger at all of dipping below health, uh, below protection. Um, he does such a great job of uh, of recovering protection, and you can use them against uh, almost any team, which uh, um, which has AOE, single target attacks, days, anything at all. Um, Stormtrooper Han is is such an amazing character to take over there. So very easy, 54 against a, a team meant to strip uh, banners through AOEs. Now, I wanted to see the top, the ship zone before I went down south, so decided to take uh, Bosk Bounty Hunters against the, um, um, against the, the uh, old Ben squad. Spirit is pretty weak, uh, not much to, uh, to worry about, uh, but she is the one I need to target to get my contract. And I am able to take her out pretty easily before she gets to go because I have a pretty fast Bosk and Grief. Uh, but now I need to, uh, uh, for the getting the contract, I need to target Dooku. Um, so I can't do that since he's under stealth. So I need to get Old Ben down. I have to either wait for Dooku to get out of stealth or I have to get Old Ben down enough uh, that I'm able to, uh, to, to shift the target to him. So still hidden behind stealth and behind a taunt so i continue to attack old ben 
um, but this team is pretty uh, pretty sturdy so there's really no no mu not much uh, danger of uh, losing anyone and Dooku doesn't have any AOE attacks which is why you know hiding behind stealth uh, hiding behind the taunt of Bosk is, is great. So now the taunt, uh, the target has shifted to Old Ben and I'm able to get the contract. Now uh, Dooku has gone under stealth again, but you know I just want to annihilate uh, Old Ben and then start uh, targeting Dooku since he's the only guy left. So yeah, his uh, even though it's a high relic Dooku, he really doesn't do much damage against uh, uh, Bosk, especially with the extra defense bonus that he has. Uh, with tenacity up and uh, you know with the extra with uh, you know within with being r5 as well i think uh, uh, dooku is not going to do any damage at all to this particular team he might be able to stun my characters once in a way but that's perfectly okay because you know i've got all the time in the world to uh, to get through dooku there we go we've got our uh, terminate ability and disintegrate and we get that done now let's take a look at what ships he has uh, if my guess is right, it's going to be both the get two ships, and there we go, both the get two ships. And he's done something very interesting with uh, with Kenobi, which I've never seen him done in his history before. He's put Thai bomber in there with it. Um, that's supposed to make it slightly tougher because what happens is, uh, um, especially if uh, you know, the enemy negotiator is faster, they would typically tend to target down Anakin because there's no tank on the field or no taunt on the field. So what this does is, because Fives is going to be faster than uh, both Anakin as well as the enemy negotiator, Fives is going to go and apply target lock, lock on someone which is not uh, unavailable and unresistible. That will make uh, your TIE Bomber taunt and uh, it'll give a little more time for your Anakin to... Uh, to uh, you know, get his AOE off. It'll give time for uh, for the the negotiator to to get his AOE or unending loyalty out. So it just makes it a little more tricky, and it makes uh, the rebel counter to this negotiator fleet very tough as well. And you must have seen from my history that I've taken rebels once or twice against negotiator, um, and definitely the Radus is is not going to work against this because. Uh, you know, Fives is going to go pretty early and get the taunt on this guy, and I'm, I'm going to have a hard time targeting uh, Anakin. So it is a good thing that I saved my uh, my own negotiator on offense, given that my opponent has got such a strong history of strength in ships. Um, it's a good thing I saved my own uh, uh, negotiator um, so that I can at least do a mirror match over there and then use the Radus against the, uh, the um, Separatist squad. All right, so now... Uh, there's the uh, I take my Treya against Night Sister squad. This is a, a really old counter. Um, the Night Sisters are all relicked up, but there's really no damage on this team apart from Asajj, who ramps up on death. So I just need to make sure that nobody dies before Asajj dies. And uh, what I do over here is whether it was a 5v5 or 3v3 counter from for Treya against Night Sisters, what you need to do is you need to uh, isolate Zombie. Um, and all the debuffs and stuns don't matter because Treya is going to dispel them. So you isolate Zombie and then you delay, delay, delay until you get your Annihilate ability available from uh, Nihilus. And then you Annihilate um, um, Asajj in this particular case because Dark Darka is completely harmless. Her stuns won't do anything at all. So that's basically what you do. You, you need to avoid the... You need to keep the Isolate on Zombie till the end. And you need to just get to a couple of... Um, a uh, uh, couple of uh, annihilates uh, take care of uh, Asajj first then take care of Daka and uh, and then just kill zombie naturally so now you see here I've got the first annihilate out um, and then I'm uh, I'm keeping the isolate on zombie and uh, and obviously Daka can't revive anyone else so I'm keeping the isolate on zombie and uh, just you know, treading softly around it, making sure that I don't kill either Zombie or Daka, because in those cases, the both those cases, the Isolate is going to go away from Zombie. She's going to start tanking, and it's going to become, uh, it's going to take a little more time to to target Daka again. So, um, I'm just biding my time, waiting till uh, till I get my Annihilate again, and then yeah, I'm about one off from the Annihilate. Target Zombie to make sure nobody dies. The relic zombie really helps over there to, to delay things. And then I annihilate Daka and completely completely bypass the uh, the zombie revive thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I just uh, need to, I'll probably end with 52 banners over here because uh, I think Nihilus has got full protection. 
but uh, won't be able to recover all the protection on Treya or Scion, which is perfectly fine. Um, as I mentioned, not going to be an efficiency battle this one. So that brings us to the final character zone battle. Uh, JKL versus uh, JKL and JML versus the rest of my roster. Now, frankly speaking, I've exhausted all my GLs, my only GL that I had. Um, so there's nothing left in my roster to beat this, which is why I threw the rest of my roster uh, for all the teams uh, around it to one shot it with decent banners. Um, and I decided to let this remain because I knew that my opponent will not be able to clear my my character zone as well. And at least I was a little more efficient over there. So I I waited till my opponent uh, went. Um, you know, there's just a, an, an hour, I think less than an hour left. Uh, he one shot my full character zone, whatever zones he attempted in the front. So very uh, surprisingly, he attacked my top zone first, uh, went and saw what the ships were and then cleared the ships for uh, 59, 60 banners. He typically gets 66, 67 on ships, but uh, I was able to strip some banners on ships over here. Uh, but no surprise, he was able to one shot both of them pretty comfortably for 59, 60 banners each. Um, and then down south, he one shot my front zone as well. I think he took C versus the uh, the JML squad. Uh, don't know what he took against G the, the CLS squad or the gas squad. Um, and surprisingly, even my Rex with Cat was one shot as well. Um, he's got some pretty good Sith tr Triumvirate uh, relic up more than R5. So I think he might have used Sith Triumvirate against that. But, uh, you know, no idea. But the front zone and the top zone did their job because uh, he wasn't able to clear my back zone at all. He attempted the weakest team in the back zone, which was Maul, Dooku and Nest. And even that he had to double shot. Uh, but apart from that, the other squads that I had, JKR is extremely tricky. Uh, both the Shakti and the uh, Bad Bad squad is 361 speed. And my Ray, obviously, you know, GL, and he's he's already exhausted all of his GL. So there's no way he was going to be able to even touch that. So four teams he wasn't able to touch at all. Um, and uh, 2640 was his final score. So he's definitely not going to be able to do anything else. So all I need to do is clear ships. I've got 2521. So I get 186 banners for clearing the uh, the ship zone. All I need to do is clear ships and I will uh, I will win. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, if we can win. Now, I first decided to go against the Malevolence and I use my Radus over here. Uh, lately, over the last month or so, I've been doing something different with the uh, Radus against uh, Malevolence to make things slightly more uh, reliable, make the counter slightly more reliable and to lose less teams and lo less ships and uh, get more banners. What I decided to do is I, I still go with my Houndstooth and Poe Dameron as my starting lineup, but I also put in Scimitar in there. Now, the... The, uh, the advantage of Houndstooth is he dispels on his basic, and uh, if he gets retribution, then he keeps, uh, you know, every time he gets attacked, he keeps uh, uh, doing his basic and dispelling. So all debuffs just smoothly slide off him, which is why Ahsoka works so well with uh, Houndstooth, because she gives him um, retribution. And a couple of other ships which also work amazingly well with Houndstooth, which also give him retribution. There's Xanadu Blood which is why he's always usually paired in whenever Houndstooth is, is, is there. He's usually brought in as a reinforcement to give him, um, uh, uh, to give him um, um, uh, retribution. There's, um, there's even um, Y-Wing, which gives retribution as well. It's only a one-turn retribution. And then there's, uh, there's the Scimitar, which, uh, uh, force, which through an ability gives retribution out. So I decide to keep Scimitar over here as, as my starting lineup. And... Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do against the Malevolence lineup is to give Retribution to Houndstooth so that none of the Buzz Droids stick and, uh, you know, the, the Malevolence ship is not able to uh, burst down my Houndstooth as early. I'm still taking my, my Xanadu Blood as a reinforcement, as a backup uh, to give Retribution in case, uh, you know, Scimitar dies. Um, but I decided to take in, uh, you know, a full fleet of ships over here. So uh, this is how it works. So what you do is, uh, you know, with, you have to get to your ultimate as soon as possible. So you need to target, uh, you need to do as many specials with uh, your resistance ships while they have foresight. So that's what I've done over here. And then what I do over here is I give the special ability to, uh, to Scimitar to allow him to go first because the special ability over there uh, gives turn meter 
and uh, I then, uh, you know, give the, uh, that, that allows uh, Scimitar to give the retribution to Houndstooth. And now you can see all the debuffs that these guys are doing uh, is just falling off of uh, uh, the Houndstooth. There's uh, more buzz droids applied, but again, they were just uh, dispelled or cleansed pretty easily just because he had retribution. So now I can call in my, my resistance fleets to continue doing specials while they have foresight. So that's what I'm doing over here, trying to get to my ultimate as soon as possible. And my, and you can see over here again, uh, you know, there was a lot of debuffs applied, but I've been doing, uh, you know, the basic does an amazing job of cleansing everything. And this makes my team survive so much better. Now I use the cleanse ability to get rid of all those ugly debuffs, uh, you know, because uh, Vulture Droid uh, came as a reinforcement, so applied blind on everyone. So I'm in pretty good shape. My my teams are, uh, you know, surviving. Uh, this is the longest that I think uh, uh, I've, I've uh, played in a, in a battle where uh, all my ships are still surviving so long into a battle with the uh, uh, with the uh, Malevolence fleet, and I'm able to take out uh, the. Um, the hyena bomber uh, pretty pretty early while all my ships are still standing so what i need to do over here is make sure that uh, most of my ships are standing while i uh, finish this battle so uh both the ships have gone under stealth and unfortunately they have taken out uh, you know with the assist ability they have taken out my my houndstooth and he wasn't able to do retribution just because you know the ships attacking him were under stealth and even my scimitar has been taken out, but the battle is very much under control because uh, um, because uh, you know um, Hyena bomber uh, wasn't able to get anything much done over there. All right, so now we are in a much better situation. Just one ship left to go, and uh, we've reached our ultimate, and uh, we're able to take it out for 58 banners. So banner-wise, you know, we lost a couple of ships, so not the ideal scenario. But in terms of uh, you know stability of the counter, the scimitar makes this counter so much uh, so much more stable. Um, so you know, in the future, if you are using Radus, and if you can afford to use the Houndstooth, of course, now that Houndstooth is going to go with the Executor, if you have those. But, uh, you know, if you if you don't and you're using the Houndstooth with your Radis, Scimitar is a great option over there as well. Now, uh, negotiate a mirror. Now, this is the tricky situation. I just go in with my Rex um, Y-Wing combo. That's the, the, the thing that I'm comfortable with. Um, I do an uh, uh, AOE with Anakin to give buff immunity to, uh, to the, the TIE Bomber. And then I give some turn mirror to uh, the ship and dispel my Y-Wing and I dispel the uh, the taunt so that uh, you know he doesn't taunt anymore with the buff immunity on him. Um, he's done the burning, unfortunately. I'm trying to see if I can take him down. Um, and with this, I should be able to take him down to the basic, yes. And now, right on time, I get my plow in to heal up everyone. And uh, then I give the taunt back to the Y-Wing so now the battle is very much under control, even though they do have their own wiving in there. Um, they dispel my taunt, but uh, battle is still under control. Um, I need to get the taunt back on my uh, wiving as soon as possible. And the best way to do that is to give unending loyalty right here. And, uh, and so that when they do kill one of my ships, uh, once unending loyalty expires on any ship, the, uh, the wiving starts taunting again. So now you see Rex, uh, died and uh, was revived by unending loyalty and uh, uh, my wiving started taunting again um, so now i just need to wait it out until i'm able to get rid of annie so he's still hiding behind the taunt i need to make sure that uh, um, make sure that i'm able to get through these guys so i get in ahsoka and then dispel and then this is my chance to take out annie and now the battle is very much under control uh, i need to take out wiving because he's the he gets irritating yeah um and you know, his taunt prevents you from targeting other people so i need to get rid of uh, uh the wiving as soon as i can and then ahsoka is my next target so big mass assist on ahsoka to get rid of her and now the battle is very much under control. 
All right, so one final basic, and we get 60 banners because we brought in the full fleet of ships and we lost quite a few banners on protection and health, but uh, it was a one shot, which is what we need. We need we needed to clear the ship zone in order to win, and um, and that's what we did. So that was the end of the battle. I was pretty happy with the outcome of this one. Um, it's been a while uh, since I've uh, uh, you know, really gotten into the mood of, of a slugfest. This whole week I've done that. My first match was a slugfest. Um, this one also was a slugfest. And I've enjoyed going heavy on defense. Um, kept a couple of GLs in the first match, one GL in the second, and three GLs on, on, on defense in this third match. So um, I've really uh, been enjoying that. Um, that was my old style of play, and I've stopped doing that for a while keeping all the GLs on offense just to go for that efficiency game. But uh, I, uh, I, I, I've realized how much I've missed this style of playing and I might, uh, I might do this more often. And, you know, especially when people looking at my history, they tend to, especially good players looking at my history, they tend to, uh, you know, um, assume that I go light on defense or just because I see no GLs on defense, even though I, I tend to prevent full clears most of the time. But now I think I'm in a position where I can, I can afford to keep more GLs on defense and go really, really aggressive on defense because that is, uh, I think, my natural play style. And uh, you know, maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe I do more of that in the past, in in the future. Uh, you know, always keep your op opponents guessing. Never, never stick to a single style. Uh, always be unpredictable. That way, uh, you know, your opponents uh, can never really plan uh, well against you. Anyway, that was the end of the finals. Really enjoyable week. Um, you know, I didn't clear a couple of times, but, uh, you know, uh, still managed to get a victory with uh, pretty decent margins in, um, in all three matches. So a pretty good week. Looking forward to the second week. Uh, just to give you guys an update, I uh, do have my, my execute, the executor, um, the executor um, unlocked as of today. Uh, and I had a stash of like 16k crystals or something. I blew it all on getting the executor to six stars. I didn't have anything else left, but you know this is my stash for the last two months. Um, so I blew it all because I knew that you know Lord Vader is far away from me, and I might not end up getting him anyway. So this might be my best shot at an advantage in GAC in the future. So I blew the whole thing on uh, the uh, executor six star. Um, so I'm looking forward to keeping him, uh, the executor, on defense next week. Um, curious to see how many of my opponents have the executor as well. But executor and negotiator on defense, I think, is going to be a, a pretty formidable thing. And I think my ship zone probably might win quite a few battles in the next uh, few weeks if my opponents also don't have the executor. So that's going to be the goal. Um, so, yep, looking forward to doing some more arena testing with executor as well. To see if uh, to see how they do, I was able to use the rebels to take out a six-star executor on offense, but uh, it's not as reliable. Um, so I need to do more testing. Um, so anyway, um, that's it for this week. Looking forward to catching you guys next week. I'll probably only record a battle if uh, if it's a worthwhile match. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, if you guys see a video from me, you'll know that my opponent was was worthy of a of a good video and good commentary. All right. Uh, that's it for me. Have a nice uh, week uh, and I will catch you guys next week. Take care and happy gaming.